Hello and welcome back to part three of our wave game mode based series. In this episode, we're going to go through the process of removing enemies after we defeat them and calculating whether or not we should spawn some more in or move on to the next wave. So let's get started and take a look at this. So last time in the project, we got our waves spawning in like so, but we haven't made them killable yet to the point where they can spawn in more after we've killed a couple. So, for that to work, we need to notify our game mode when enemies have been cleared from the table so it can look and see if it has to spawn any more. And for that, we have to tell our spawners to tell the game mode. And the spawners have to track it based upon which ones they spawn in. So, let's go to our spawner and go to the spawn enemy function. And on the spawn actor, you're going to get its return value. This returns the class that it spawned for this. And what we're going to do is bind an event to when it's destroyed. Now, to handle that, I'm going to go to my enemy class. Add an event dispatcher for on destroyed. And we'll just do it on destroy actor here. Just do pull on destroyed. Then I go back to my enemy spawner and I'm going to take the spawn enemy function and just after the spawn actor from class, I'm going to take its return value and we're going to do bind event. To on destroyed. That's what we just made. Plug that in there and then plug that in there. Now, the event this is going to call is going to be telling our um, spawner here to tell the game mode that, hey, we need to try and spawn another one in. So let me go to my game mode and in here we're going to have a new variable, a new function, sorry, say on enemy defeated. And we're going to call that from our spawner. So we're going to go to our event, a bind event to undestroyed, take out the event, and do create event. In this node, you can easily just drop, click on the drop down and do create matching event. Now, if you're doing it inside a function like we are, it's going to create the event in the function, which is not going to like it because when you compile it, it's going to go, eh, can't do that. Can't do custom event inside the function. So you're just going to take that and cut it from there. And put in the event graph and we'll rename that on on enemy defeated and when it's enemy defeated we're going to get the game mode pass to our third person game mode uh cast to our first person sorry, I mean, First person game mode. Um, and then we're going to call the an enemy defeated. On enemy defeated. The game mode is now aware when the enemy is killed. And part of that, and just don't go back and double check on the spawn enemy, that that create event has still got the correct one assigned on enemy defeated. So now let's go back to our game mode. On enemy defeated, we're going to take the enemies remaining. And I'm going to decrement it, so take one away from it. So every time he gets this call, it's going to take one away. We're then going to check to see if this number is less than the max count we can have in the wave. So uh, less than or equal to the max count. And put that into a branch. That's simply just going to check, like, hey, is there space to spawn another one in? Um, yeah, so if it is less than the um, enemy max count, the amount we've got left, um, so enemy, the amount we've got left, by the way, is the a total pool, remember? So it starts for 10, kill one, it'll go down to nine. Is nine less than the max count? Yes or no? No, it's not. So if it is not less than the max count, we want to just tell the spawn enemy again. So let's say if enemy remaining here is 10, take away one, makes it nine. 9, is that less than or equal to the many max count? If it is, which it isn't in this case, it will go down the true branch and then calculate and check to see if we've actually won the match or not. If it's less than the max count, that means we're in the final numbers. If we are false, meaning that the number remaining is still much higher than the max count, then we're going to spawn another one in. We keep spawning another enemy in. So to spawn another enemy in, we're just going to go back to our start wave. 
and you've got this for loop going on again. We're just going to do that again. Okay, so you can go to get me from pool and do this copy and put that onto the false. Bear loop. So if there's still enemy left to spawn in, it's going to spawn one in. Okay. But if it's true though, we're going to go from if enemy is remaining is less than or equal to zero. That means the wave is finished. We've reached the end of the wave. So let's put another branch in. I'll go in there. And if it's true, we're going to take it going to the start transition. So enter transition. True. So let's compile and save this. And now let's go back to the game. So we should now get five spawned in. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. And let me shoot another one. So I've killed one. That should trigger another one to be spawned in. So there should still be five here. So one, two, three, four, five. Excellent. Let's kill these two that have just got stuck. They're going to spawn in again. One, two, three, four, five. Spawn in a few more. But now we should be hitting the end of our pool. The amount of remaining is now down to, what, three, is it? Yeah, it looks like it's three. So it won't spawn any more in because we've reached the end of our pool. And... Now it's going to hit that transition phase. And so it's now in between waves. And this is where the player can do upgrades or build defenses or, you know, whatever they want to do. Start a timer. And then it will start the next wave. So to that transition, we're going to go into there on our game mode. Uh, not that one. Uh, game mode. Oh, closed it. Silly me. Um, go to enter transition. And in here, we're going to do a timer. So set timer. by function name and the function name would be the new wave new wave which increments it again to the next one and it goes through the pattern again the time we want to do this on i'm going to actually part that into the end of transition and just do transition time uh, or transition period we'll call it I can actually spell. There we go. Period. And so that's like the timer. And we're going to have a return value on this transition timer so we can actually show it on the screen later with the UI. So promote that to variable. Work transition timer. And hit compile. Then that will go through, start a new wave, and then go through the loop again. So if I go back to the transition period here and start this at the default of uh, five seconds. When I kill those first 10, it should wait and then go again. So let's do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's number 10. Did it miscount in the for loop? Might have miscount in the for loop. If in that case, we'll go back and have a look. Uh, I probably have miscounted in the for loop. Yeah, I have. Um, so let's go back to the game mode, and I think I know what I've done wrong. Is this less than or equal to? I think it should just be less than. Um, so if it's less than the max count, we'll go through there. Right, let's try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, and it's ten. Ten. So we'll wait five seconds and it's just to go again. There you go, back again. And another ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. 
and it'll wait again. We're now on wave three. And there we go. And that is how we're doing the wave system. Now, obviously, this is very basic at the moment. We've got no UI. So in the next episode, we're going to go through the UI and show that information on the screen for the player to see. And there you go. Thank you for watching. We have now got our wave mode set up. Now all that's left is to do the UI. So in the next episode, we're going to go through the widget creation to create a HUD so we can see what wave number we're on, how many areas we've got left, and when we're into the transition phase. If you want to watch the next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early than just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.